Hello, and welcome to the Handy Capable Black Woman Throne Room Podcast Edition. I am a woman, I am of color, and I am handy capable, but most importantly, I am human. And I know I I plan on doing a part two from the last episode that I was covering, but... Some interesting things have been going on in the dating community lately. And yes, I know I talk a lot about dating. That's that's not what I mean for my main theme to be. But you know what? Things are happening. Especially when I write my novels and I write not only disability representation, people of color representation, LGBTQ representation, but their rep- representation in the dating world, things that they go through because I have had a dating nightmare throughout my life. If you've listened to my podcast episodes, you know about Mr. No Heart, you know about Mr. Lockakee, and there's so many more stories about those two. And soon I'm going to be covering a, a mini series on the definition of a parent, the definition of a mother, because a lot of people are blaming me for not having kids, or they're accusing me of caring more about my education and diploma than having children, but they don't ask me. They don't sit down and ask me questions. They don't inquire. They just accuse And some say, oh, you must not want kids, you're selfish. And it's like, should everybody be a parent? I know there's that, in my opinion, okay, this is just my opinion with the eight passengers lady, but in in my honest opinion, should she have been a parent? Because there's some of these people out here who, they can make things look nice and shiny like a diamond, but... When you look closer, you just find out it's it's as dull and awful than just mud, dirt, like, yeah, so it's worse than the swamp when you look deeper into it. And so sometimes when people, they give so much credit to some parents, but at years later, you realize that some of these people have been through so much mental or mental abuse because their mental health has been damaged because of their parents and sometimes parents later on apologize because they like oh well there's no handbook to parenting I did the best I can but and then they damage human beings people who have to live every day once they turn 18 they're an adult but at the same time They have to pay the consequences of the treatment from their parents. And I want kids. I've always, I've always wanted to be a mom, but (laughs) with that, that means I have to trust the person that I share DNA with. And once I have and create and produce children, that means I am going to have to at least somewhat stay in communication with this other person for the rest of my life. Some people say, oh, it's only until you're 18. No, even though that child's an adult, they're still your child. They're both of your child. So, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a series on this because a lot of especially on the dating apps, a lot of men are making it clear to me that, oh, I should be ashamed of myself and my job is to have children. But they don't understand that I was trying to make sure I had the best platform and opportunity for my children once I have them. And some people tell me, oh, just have children. You'll figure it out. You'll make it work. Well, um, at the same time, a lot of people want to blame certain people for needing government assistance and everything in order to make sure they can feed their children. And with the school lunches and stuff, it's like some communities need free lunch, but 
yeah, let's just say that I'm going to be rubbing in some political information on that, especially with the Republican Party, who in many states have been refusing that. So, and one state actually wants to add fees to, like, if they, if the child is not able to pay for the lunch at that time, they want to actually start adding fees to it. So, yeah, I'm going to be talking all about definition of a parent, what defines a parent, because it's like, yeah, I'm, I will be an older parent either by adopting or, you know, the natural way, but I want it the best for my children. I want it to not, I want it to be without doubt that they will be fed, that I will be able to give them the best educational opportunities, that I could be someone they can look up to because I'm working on my goals, my dreams, and everything. And especially if I have a daughter, I want her to be inspired. I want her to know that, yes, you have a uterus, but at the same time, you have a brain, you have a heart. It's like, do what you want with it. Make the world a better place. Make sure you are as best as you can possibly be. That's what my goal is. And, well, like I said, I'm working on that series and everything. But <laughs> right now, we're going to talk about some dating. Because, oh my gosh, the mm, ladies, some of you ladies. Ooh. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm going to drag the men. And not maybe not this episode, but I'm going to be, I'm going to drag some men in a bit again. But... That the one story where, um, well, she met this guy and they exchanged numbers and contact information. He messaged her and she made sure to let everyone know that she was not interested in him, but you know, she, she let him text and everything. And he, like a few weeks in, she still had no interest in him, but she, he asked, and offered to take her out for dinner, for lunch and stuff. And she obliged, she agreed. And he took her to a place where she goes on, goes at on a weekly basis for clams. Ah, wow. And yeah, clam, I, I enjoy a good clam. I've had them a few times in my life, but um, this young lady, as, and I do have to admit, it's like, I think I saw part of her outfit. It looked like, you know, it's like, okay, at least, you know, the outfit was cute. But she, she ordered f four dozen clams. And you know what? Not, she has an appetite. She's a thick girl like me. But she was recording the whole thing and she didn't share and on top of the four dozen clams, she ordered a meal. You know, you know, she got that good, good meal and everything. And she got a drink. But at the other side of the table, the gentleman had a drink. He had a drink and didn't consume any of the clams that I know of. Did not order a meal. But when he went to the restroom he left he left his date and um she was offended but i kind of high five him because i would have left too because you can see the imbalance of the date and that she was not interested because instead of like, if you're going to slurp up four dozen clams on a date, at least talk to him. At least acknowledge him. But instead, you're, you're taping it all. Taping, like, he, you're basically allowing him to sit and watch you eat? Really? Um, because, no. <laughs> and I think this is one reason why, oh no, because... Don't worry, I'm going to be dragging the men, not, if not in this episode, very soon. But I hear a lot of men tell me that, 
oh, if I'm taking you on a date, if I'm paying for a meal, then I better get some or I better get A, B, and C. It's like basically they better get something. And a lot of men say how a lot of women nowadays only go out on dates for a free meal. And I have encountered some women who do do that. But then that messes up the women who actually authentically are trying to date and find that right guy. And it's annoying. And it's to the point where on first dates now, I go Dutch. And I tell the guy what kind of restaurant, like, or what the budget is. And I mean, because I... I like places like, well, Cheesecake Factory, so I'm going to get to that story in a little bit. But at the same time, I like the small business mom and pop places because I like promoting small businesses, giving them a little bit of that money, a little bit of that cash. Because che- Cheesecake Factory, oh, they don't have to worry. They're going to have consumers. They have their population. They're, they're good. So it's like if we can just find, you know, I was like... I, I, well, I love Cracker Bear too, because yeah, I'm good with a stack of pancakes, some scrambled eggs, get some biscuits with that gravy. But anyway, you know, I'm going to make myself hungry. But to me, I, I authentically, I want to get to know the guy. And so I'm at the point where I go Dutch. Some of the, some of the guys are like, no, mm-mm, I'm paying. But there's been one time where I'm like, okay, it's like you can, if you want to pay. But then at the end of the night, he got so upset that I was not going to um, play with him. Yeah, I'll say like that, play with him. And he said, but I paid for your meal. And I said, I will go Dutch. I said I would pay for my own meal. Yeah, but since I paid for it, that means I should get A, B, and C. Well, mostly he wanted to put his D in. Yeah, so you you know the drill. Um, But it's just, it's just amazing with, because with some men, they would ask me out and I know they're not my type. And so I say no thank you or even with the dating apps, they message me. If I see that on the app, they're not my type. I don't I don't even reply because I don't want to give them a facade. I don't want them thinking that, oh, I have a chance. So I just feel like, okay, if I just leave them, you know, it's like they can focus on somebody else because sometimes if I comment like, oh, hi, how are you? How's the dating scene? And it's like, because sometimes I just want to, it's like I try to at least do the we can chat as friends. It's like, I'm, I'm not interested as dating, but we can chat as friends. Then I get sworn at, yelled at, ridiculed, and put down. And so, yeah, I'm at the point where if I don't think we're a match, I don't even reply. Because even trying to be friends or tr- at least trying to just chat and talk and have a friendly conversation, that's out the door. But a lot of men have this, not anxiety, but this just, I don't even know what it is. Because some women have taken advantage of the guy's wallet. And at the same time, a lot of these men are not able to flatter a woman or, um, they're not able to have their personality shine enough to impress a woman to want to engage in playing. And so some of them feel like if they, as long as they pay for the meal, they've paid for the play. And, oh, mm, mm. it's like part of me just feels like, um... That's just me. You're paying for, um, if that's how you feel like you need to get some, doesn't that mean you're paying, yeah, you're paying the, you know, mm, yeah, oh, yeah. Shouldn't you want to be able to 
get the date and get the play because of your personality, because you made her laugh, because you made her feel special, and that she had an amazing time with you, and not because you um, gave her too many alcoholic beverages. Because, yeah, I've been on some dates as well where some men, they keep pressuring me to drink, and I say I don't drink, and they one time this guy ordered a drink for me and he just kept telling me to drink and I'm like I don't drink and at the end he even told me and he was like well if I can't get you intoxicated how am I supposed to get you home what uh what excuse excuse me but yeah ah <sighs> The text messages I got that night from him, who, we. So when I saw what this woman with the oysters did, I know she wanted to get her eat on. I know she wanted a good meal and everything. I know she wanted to be able to post it, brag about it. But at the same time, that guy seemed like at least he was a nice guy. He seemed like, sometimes I feel like we might be turning some of the good guys into bad because of the treatment and because like some of the women are abusing their kindness for weakness. And that's not, it, like the whole thing just felt so toxic to me because like when I, date, and that's another thing, like when I date, it's like, cause, oh, mm, and I've got screenshots about this too, because it's, some guys are like, oh, you don't really just want to date. You feel like an interview. The first date is an interview. It's like, if I'm looking for someone to possibly marry, yeah, it's, it's going to be like an interview. It's like, I want to laugh. I want to have great conversation, but at the same time, I want to make sure that you're someone that I want to spend more time with. And I'm tired of men just thinking if they tell me how many inches that that's going to convince me to like go out with them and spend time with them and want them and desire them. No, I need to know how many brain cells you've got rubbing together up in there. No, it's like, yeah, well, I'm a sapiosexual for one. So yeah, especially so. And a lot of guys don't get sapios. A lot of guys don't. Yeah, you need to do your research. Like, for those who don't know about that, do your research. (sighs) Oh, and I I have, I'm going to have an episode too about all the messages with screenshots. I'm I'm probably going to blur their faces because the men that truly troll, oh, I show their faces. But for the men who... I don't even know, I don't even know how to explain it, but yeah, it's like, part of me feels bad but for them, but at the same time, I know they're a grown adult, and I know they know how to talk to people, but then they only want to degrade and use and take advantage of women, so part of me doesn't want to hide their faces, but I know they will be so embarrassed. They will be so embarrassed if I showed their faces with the messages they sent me. So, for right now, I will blur their faces, or at least put a smiley face over their faces. But the trolls, I will continue showing their faces because some of these guys feel like they can be the, like the absolute bully, troll, nightmare, and no one else is going to know. It'll be their little secret. Well, I'm petty. I'm so petty. Ooh, I enjoy pettiness, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's over. And I'm letting the secret out. I'm letting the world know. And yeah, so that's one reason why I try to do this. Because a lot of people don't understand. And yes, I'm single and kind of ready to meet like I retired for a while it's like from dating for about eight months I haven't been on a single date I haven't even tried I just backed up 
and I start writing a list of what do I want to accomplish? What do I want to do? How do I want to be the best woman I can be? And doing research on male specimen banks because I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? If I, if I never marry, I'm okay with that. It's like technology is wonderful and they have places for women to be able to be single moms and be okay with that. And at least with me being the single mom, I would not have to tr tell my two children that their father abandoned them. Really. Like I could just be like, you know what? Your mom didn't find that special guy and everything, but I, I still want and love like so that's one another reason why i'm doing the definition of a parent definition of a mom dad and everything because i've been looking at other options because i want to adopt and i'm looking at the male specimen clinic and things like that and i know some of the republicans have been telling people what real parents are what real parents aren't especially marjorie taylor that in my opinion that evil no good wretched nightmare so yeah it's like i don't know if you, i might try to find the link if not in this part in the next part where there was a she was at one of her meetings and talking to this woman and the woman was saying how she is a mom or a stepmom to her wife's daughter I, I believe it was a daughter to her child and marjorie taylor green was just like then you're not a real mother so, yeah. So when I talk about the definition of a parent and so with dating and especially with this example right here, I'm trying to find someone to love. I'm trying to find someone that will make me happy. If I'm going to have a father in my child's life, I want to be excited and happy and thrilled with the person I chose. I know some people out there who are not like, it was kind of like a one night stand. It was a oopsie. It was a, oh, my bad. Yeah, kind of like Mr. No Heart. He was about to break up with his ex or now ex-wife. And I think the week that he was going to call her to break up, she told him she was pregnant. And on more than 10 occasions, he told me they were, well, yeah, I'll save that. I'll save that. Yeah. Probably be in the title of one of the episodes, but yeah. So when it comes to all this dating, and that's why it's like with me, dating and parenthood collides. They come together because dating is an interview process. You're getting to know that person. You're finding out who they really are. And so for this woman to take advantage of this guy it's like, I feel bad for it, like, because part of me feels like if he was nice enough to take you, like, I, but th at the same time, I don't know what was in the text messages. I don't know what his goal was, and I don't know his intentions or his opinion of her. So at the end of the day, it might be that maybe he didn't have the right intentions or thoughts about her, but... None of us know. So right now, I have to say that it seems like he was an authentic, nice guy. And it's, he was patient because he, he was there throughout the four dozen clams, hearing her slurp and slurp and slurp, like continuously, repetitively. And... He had one drink and then she had a meal. He had that one drink. She had a drink. He had that same exact one drink. So it's just alarming to me. And at the same time with some of these men out here who are mean and vicious to me, I kind of... I understand part of their viciousness because hurt people hurt people. And some of these men have been hurt. Some of these men 
have been taken advantage of when it comes to dating. So, and some of these women take advantage of their beauty, take advantage of their vibrant personality and their femininity. Because, oh yeah, it's like, like I said, she, oh yeah, she was hot that night. She was doing her thing. I give her credit for that. But some women know that men, it's like because even at my church, my pastor and bishop, like, they always, and like, oh, mm -hmm. I've been studying some of these Republican pastors. Oh, ew, mm, ew. And how they keep talking about women need to be beautiful, women need to be feminine, women need to blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, they don't talk about what men need to do. So that might be another series down the line. I still have a lot of research to do with them, but when I keep hearing men tell me that you're older now, it's like men just want beauty. We just want fertility. But at the same time, some of these men who talk about fertility and all this other stuff, they're 50, like some of them are in their 50s. Some of them are hanging on to 47, 48. And okay, okay, you still want kids, okay. But how are you going to put down a woman who's younger than you? Yes, I'm older, but I'm younger than you, but you're going to put me down. But then you still say you want kids. And so that's another thing when I date. And, oh, that's one reason, oh, I love the Bumble dating app because it lets you know if they have children, if they don't have children, but most importantly, if they do have children, if they want more children, or if they never want children, or if they have children and don't want any more. That has helped save me so much time. So, yeah, and this is not a sponsored app or whatever. But Bumble, as like, I wish other dating apps had some of the same options and things because swiping wise, it helps me so much and it helps men know that I'm not their type because yes, I was like, not only save my time, save them time because I'm a Democrat, I'm a Democrat, I am a progressive liberal. And so when I see conservative I don't care what they look like. I don't care if they might be handsome. Don't care. I don't care if it looks like they have money. Don't care. It's like our views are so opposite. We would not last. And if we even try to get married, that would be a divorce. So, and then the parenting, like the parenting, um, like lifestyles would be different because their views would be very different from mine. So, and then the men who don't want any more children. Okay, I want children, so that's not a match. And with other dating apps, like um, the Facebook dating app, it's like I kept meeting guys who have kids, don't want any more kids, but then they tried, they literally tell, they were like Mr. No Heart. Who, yeah, just like Mr. No Heart. Because for seven years, he kept telling me, you don't want any kids. You're lucky. Don't have kids. They're a waste of time. And I'm still going to wait to tell you what he called his children. He told me this at least 10 times. And I'm going to talk more about the dating. Because like to me, dating and marriage and having kids all comes together. Because like I said, I'm dating to find, try to find a husband to then have kids with. And I want to be excited about who I choose. So I am going to talk about all that amazing stuff very soon. But just now, I am the Handy Capable Black Woman. Thank you for being and joining me in the throne room. I'm a woman. I am of color. And I am Handy Capable. But most importantly, I am human. And so are you. You guys have a great day. Bye, guys.